hi everyone! Today we're going to be making this extremely simple scrap yarn wine koozie or wine tote for those 750 milliliter bottles. And for our wine cozy, we are going to be working with two strands of yarn at once. So you can use any yarn that you have lying around and it doesn't need to be the same size, weight, brand, or type. For me, I'm working with some leftover Lion brand yarns, size four, medium weight, recycled cotton and polyester blend yarn. And you're also going to want to grab a size K or six and a half millimeter crochet hook. And go ahead and grab both strands of yarn and for this entire project we are going to crochet two strands as if they are one. So we're going to begin by attaching the yarn to our crochet hook using a magic circle and we want to chain one and then place six single crochets inside of our magic circle. And once you have your six single crochets in place, you can pull on your tail to tighten the gap in your magic circle. And for the next few rows, I recommend grabbing a stitch marker, a safety pin, or a scrap piece of yarn, and we're going to mark the first stitch in each of our rows. So we're going to begin a spiral or continuous loop pattern, which means we won't have to worry about starting and stopping our individual rows, but that's why we need to mark the first stitch. For our next row, we are going to skip our chain one, and we're going to place increasing slip stitches in the remaining six stitches in our row. So how we're going to increase with slip stitches is we're going to place a slip stitch in the back loop only as well as the front loop only for each stitch in our row. So again, start by placing your slip stitch in the back loop only and then you want to switch to placing it in the front loop only. And keep these slip stitches really, really loose because you will be working in them later. Once you've placed your first two slip stitches, go ahead and mark the first. And from here, we're just going to place those increasing slip stitches going all the way around our row for a total of 12 slip stitches. And you've made it to the end of your row when you get back to your stitch marker. So you can go ahead and remove it. And for our next row, we're going to place one slip stitch in the front loop only of our first stitch, and then we're going to place that increasing slip stitch in our second stitch. So again, we're just going to place the slip stitch in the back loop only, as well as the front loop only. And don't forget to mark the first stitch. From here, we're going to repeat that alternating pattern going around our row for a total of 18 slip stitches. And the pattern for our next row is to place one slip stitch in the front loop only of our first two stitches, and then we're going to place that increasing slip stitch in our third stitch. And we're going to repeat that pattern going around our row for a total of 24 slip stitches. And the pattern for this next row is to place one slip stitch in the front loop only of the first three stitches, and then we're going to place that increasing slip stitch in our fourth stitch. And we're going to repeat that going around our row for a total of 30 slip stitches. And the pattern for our next row is to place one slip stitch in the front loop only of our first four stitches, and then we want to place that increasing slip stitch in our fifth. And we're going to repeat that going around our row for a total of 36 slip stitches. And when you get to the end of your row, you can go ahead and set your stitch marker to the side because we will not need it anymore. And the pattern from here is just to place one slip stitch in the front loop only of each stitch in each of our rows going all the way around and working up in a spiral. And we want to repeat this until we have a total of 25 rows of our slip stitch in the front loop only. 
And when you start to run out of one of your strands of yarn, go ahead and pull your old strand to the side and then grab your replacement strand like this. And you're also going to hold that to the side while you pick up both strands of yarn. And while you're still holding this new strand, I want you to continue working your pattern like normal. So you're just going to pick up where you left off with your pattern, placing your slip stitches in the front loop only. And after you've placed your first couple of stitches, you can tie your old and new strands together. So that's how you're going to add in additional yarn whenever you need to. And once you have your 25 rows, then your wine koozie should look something like this. From here, we are simply going to switch from placing slip stitches in our front loop only to placing slip stitches in our back loop only, like this. So you're just going to place one slip stitch in the back loop only of each stitch for the next five rows. And you don't have to worry about marking your stitch because you can see here that this is the first stitch because we leave behind this front loop only here. So go ahead and place five rows of slip stitches in the back loop only and I will meet back up with you there to form the handles. And once you've placed your five rows of slip stitches in the back loop only, then it's time to create the handle. So how we're going to do that is we're going to place a slip stitch up underneath the full stitch of our next stitch. Then we want to chain nine. Once you have your nine chains in place, then we're going to skip nine stitches. And we're going to place a slip stitch in that 10th stitch. Again, working up underneath the full stitch. Then we want to place one slip stitch in the back loop only of our next seven stitches. Then we're going to place a slip stitch up underneath the full stitch of our next stitch. Then we're going to chain nine again. And again, we want to skip nine stitches. And we're going to place a slip stitch up underneath that 10th stitch under the full stitch. Then we want to place one slip stitch in the back loop only of our next seven stitches. And this should get you back to your first handle. And when you make it back here to this first handle, you should have a total of 36 stitches. So you should have nine chain stitches for each handle and nine slip stitches between your handles. From here, we're just going to place one slip stitch in the back loop only of each stitch in our row. So we're going to start with these chain stitches that form our first handle. So we're just placing one slip stitch in the back loop only of each of these chains. Then when you get back to the base of your wine koozie, you're just going to continue placing your slip stitches in the back loop only. Then again, you want to work your slip stitches in the back loop only for your second handle. Then you're going to place your slip stitches again around the base of your wine tote here until you get back to your first handle. And from here, we want to add four more rows of placing one slip stitch in the back loop only of each stitch in each of our rows. And after placing your five rows, then the top of your handles should look something like this. 
and I want you to end your last row at the end of your second handle here. So at this point, you should have five rows above each handle. From here, what we're going to do is place one slip stitch up underneath the full stitch in our next two stitches. Then we're going to cut and tie off our yarn. And from here, we're just going to weave our tail in the direction that we were crocheting for two stitches. And then we're going to hide it on the inside of our wine tote between the two handle holes here. If you run into any issues while you are creating this project, let me know in the comments below. And if you do complete this project, take a picture and share it with me on social media. I love to see your completed projects and what you come up with, especially with the scrap yarn combos. Thank you so much for working with me, and I hope you have a wonderful, awesome day.